Independent Educator with Genomi Canada and today I'm really excited to share with you um, a little bit about um, some awesome features on uh, our embroidery machines that are going to kind of elevate your embroidery to the next level. Um, some of them are features that are completely new to me that when I started researching for this I was like oh my goodness I didn't realize I could do that so it's awesome there's always something new to learn. Um, and really I started with, uh, oh look all over. Hi everyone. I started with a memory craft 200 and E 200 E and it was, um, it was great. It did what I needed it to do. Um, but the 550 E is definitely leaps and bounds above that. And it's really got me excited about doing embroidery on a whole bunch of new projects. Okay. So I'm going to flip you back around. Hello. Okay. So I made this little hoop and I used, it was just kind of like a quick sample um, stitch out and I used all different functions on my 550E. And a lot of these functions can be found on any of our other um, memory craft or our embroidery machines. Uh, the big deal with the 550E is we have a ginormous hoop on this one. The biggest hoop is the RE36B and it's like you won't need a bigger hoop. So um, it's super flexible. So I'm going to show you a couple different things. But first I wanted to show you um, this cool pack that I have and it's Madeira stabilizers and it has so many different stabilizers for you to use for your embroidery. Um, I really like a tearaway. This this section up here is a tearaway, so I like to use um, the cotton soft a lot or the cotton stable. But uh, Madeira and our dealers, we um, Janome supplies these to our dealers, or you can get them through your dealer, and they're really great if you're starting out with embroidery. This is a great place to start out to try a couple different things to see what you like and what works best for you. Okay, gonna bring you back over to the machine. So I've started up my machine and um, this is the screen that you get when you first start up. So I'm going to first go in and I'm going to find um, that cool little uh, wreath that I did. So I go back into the flower here and it shows you all the different um, different designs that you have access to. And I really like the favorites. The favorite has some really cool things. So I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to pick this wreath. Okay, so then it gives you a warning that you're going to keep your hands clear and it's going to move. And then... It'll get all started. I don't have a hoop on yet. Okay, so it has set up for the SQ14B hoop. And I'm just going to go into our edit menu, which is up at home. And into this little grid one. And I'm going to change my hoop. It's just going to be easier for me today if I change it to an SQ20B. So I'm going to select that and then hit back OK. Awesome. So now it's going to bring us to our ready to sew screen. Is that clear enough for everyone? Uh, Sassarella, that's a really good question. What is good for t-shirt material? I... Um, when I'm embroidering like logos on things, I tend to use a tearaway cotton soft. Um, and then it, cause sometimes it, the thread gets scratchy, then I, I use um, an interfacing, an iron on interfacing over top. So um, sometimes though you'll need multiple layers of a stabilizer. So you really have to like play around and test it out to see what's going to work well for your material. Okay, so. We have in here, there's so much to tell you. This top box here is going to have your stitch out time, how many colors, what hoop you're using. If you're ever wondering which hoop it has it set up for, it's right there. So it's at a moment's glance, you've got all the info you need. Okay, but this is my one of my favorite buttons. I like to see everything that I'm embroidering, but this, if you click on it, it will show you just what is being embroidered right in that stitch path. So down here I have 2050 GSP, that's the color of thread, and it's going to stitch that. So sometimes it depends on what project you're working on. I like to toggle back and forth because I'm like, when I look at this, I'm like, mm, what is that? What is that part of? And then it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's the next step. So that's a great one to use. 
And then this is our um, trace key. So when we use this and we click on this button right here, it's going to move, sorry, our arm around and outline, once you have the hoop on, your stitch pattern and exactly where it is going to be stitched out, the borders of your stitch pattern on um, your hoop. So I'm gonna add in my hoop now. I should have done that earlier. And just make sure that it goes through a corner and I attach it, we're nice and seated. Okay, so, sorry, I'm moving you around. All right, so when I touch that, I'll do it again so you can see it kind of goes around the whole perimeter, the all the different edges of your embroidery path so that you know exactly where it's stitching. There's no guessing. And then we'll come back here. So these, up here and you'll see that one has a solid line but when you click on this one this is going to give you a basting box around where your or within your embroidery design and then this one is going to give you a double basting box so this is really important when you have some stretching material so your t-shirt material might be great for using this because this is going to stitch through your fabric through your stabilizer and it's going to stabilize everything so that when it's stitching out, you're not getting distortion. So I'm going to click on the single one. So we have everything set up here and it says just press start stop button. So we're going to come back over here. It's a lot of moving today, sorry. Okay, when we go to base, the problem is our bobbin thread is under there and sometimes it doesn't catch. So then you're basting because it's nice long stitches and they're not going to hold. So there's a cool little trick for doing this. And um, you're going to simply press the start stop button two times in a row, and it's gonna set you up in the top right hand corner of your basting box. So let's do that. We're gonna press start once. Oh, and it's telling me to lower my presser foot. It always tells you what to do. I like it. I like to know what to do. Okay, start stop, and then I'm gonna press it again. And it's gonna stop in that corner. So um, when you raise that up, then you use your hand wheel and go into the fabric and then you can pull up that tail and pull it and now you have your tail fabric up so or your tail thread up and then you can baste and hold on to that for the first couple of stitches and you're going to hold it in place. And Liz is saying here you need a soft cutaway for t-shirts and hoop stabilizer, not the t-shirt fabric. Um, base the t-shirt, base the t-shirt fabric to the stabilizer, which was hoops. Okay. So it's a cup. There's a lot of trial and error and there's a lot of cool tricks. So Liz is saying to use a soft cutaway for t-shirts. All right. So now I'm going to press start and I'm going to hold on to that tail and it, it's going to do a couple short stitches and then it's going to do some longer stitches in there and it's going to baste a nice single box around for us. And this is going to help stabilize everything. And I love this little, little tool to use whenever I'm starting something because I'm always afraid that maybe I don't have it stabilized quite right. So there we go, it cuts the thread and it's ready to go. Okay, now we're coming back over here. All right, so we're gonna leave this menu here. Oops, that presser, see, it tells you, it always tells you when you're doing something wrong. Okay, we're gonna leave here and I'm going to talk about, okay, so when you hoop your fabric, sometimes, I know I have this issue sometimes, I don't get it quite centered. So there's a couple cool features on here to do help you recenter and find your exact center. So this button here, this gives us our list of different um, thread steps. So each color is a different step. And then when I click on this, it's going to give us these buttons. And we are able to move the hoops. So I'll just churn you a little bit. So when I press one of the buttons, it moves us around a bit. And you can go back and forth and up and back. So this is going to help you if your center's off just a little bit to utilize that. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Sandra, that connectivity is an issue today. Um, it seems to be okay on my end. Uh, you can always try ex exiting um, Instagram and try to come back in that way. I have full strength here, so I'm not sure if it's on my end or if it's the weather. The weather is kind of crazy. Okay, and then we also have in here, if you're a little bit rotated, you can turn it and you'll see this red outline and that's your new, where your new um, angle that you're going to be stitching on. There's not a ton of adjustment within that, but depending on what you're stitching, but it gives you some options, which is really cool. And this clear key puts you right back to center. So you can do that in here as well. And it's showing you where the box is shifted off. All right, I'm going to move our hoop off to the side a little bit just so I can show you a different feature. Okay, then we go through here and we have, hi, for Virginia, that's, that's really cool that you've joined in. Oh, I'm sorry, Sandra, I'm not sure what's up, but you can always watch um, these afterwards. They are on our Instagram TV channel and we also post them eventually on our Janome Live uh, YouTube channel. So check them out there if you're having connectivity issues. You can always watch them later. Okay, so this button gives us a list of all of the colors we're using and it also gives you the stitches, which is super handy. But, oh wait, I'm gonna turn this back to that. Okay, and let's say we were stitching and we wanted to um, move our hoop and we didn't want to take it off, but we wanted to see what was going on, but it's underneath the machine. So these buttons here are going to move your hoop forward so that you can see your stitching completely. So I have that here and it's moved it forward. And I, if I click the button back again, it's going to move my hoop back to the center start position. Okay. So there's a really cool feature for when you are um, threading your machine. And this, I've told you that this, this machine tells you what to do and it, it's going to show us when it's okay to thread. So if I was on this next layer of um, stitching, um, stitching, if that pause for a second, I am now really close over to the side of my hoop and when I do am over that close, um, if you can see from there, I can't get my threader, my automatic threader down because it's hitting the hoop. So what you do and what I suggest you do every time you thread is you press the lock key. Now, the reason why you should press the lock key every time you thread is if you accidentally hit the start stop button while you're threading the machine, your fingers could be in the way. It is always safer to press the lock key. And in this case, I'm gonna do this. And then now it's telling me to move the hoop for threading. It's going to keep, you need to keep your hands clear and the carriage will start moving. And so what it does is it moves you into the middle and your, your um, threader will now come down and clear it fully. And when we look at our little lock thing, when I put the foot down, which you should put the foot down when you're using your threader, look at this little icon here. It is your okay to thread icon. So if I lift the foot, it's not okay to thread. Um, if I locked it out and it wasn't in a good position, it's not okay to thread. But as soon as you lower that foot and you have it in a safe position, you can thread it safely. It is awesome. And then simply press the lock key again and it'll tell you it's going to move again and it'll move it into a clear location. Okay. So these, those are my favorite little features from this area, but I want to show you some of the cool stuff on the editing menu that is really going to make, um, your designs like just stand out. It's awesome. So every time I want to go into my editing menu, I go into the home button and it brings up this menu and I go into the little grid. So if you, let's say, had taken the time and you had um, a little USB drive or something and you've opened up a, a design of your own, it's, it's not, it's, it doesn't take very long at all. But if you had it already out here and you wanted two of them, there is a great and quick and easy way and it's just duplicate. And 
whatever it is selected when you hit the duplicate key is then copied and you have a second copy of it. So you can do that as many times as you want. And whatever one is selected, it has a green little box that's kind of hard to see on screen that's selected. You can um, select one. Uh, when it's selected, that one will be copied. And then if you're like, oh, I only wanted three, you delete one quickly with the delete button. And so that makes editing so much quicker and easier. And then when we have, um, these are kind of overlapping because they're a little bit too big. So you can size those right on here and you can size those down. And if I took that one down to 80, now we have, oh, I always forget, you can't move in here. It clicks and tells you, or beeps and tells you. Now we have smaller ones and you could do that for each one or you could simply say, I don't want this one because it's too big, but I like the size of this one and I'm gonna copy it and have it here. So now you have the option to go back in if you're like, oh, it's a little too small. Now you can make it a little bit bigger. It's great because you can have various sizes of like certain um, duplicate things. So if you had like a big, um, wreath, but you wanted one that was a little bit smaller beside it and then one a little bit smaller, you could make that graduation easily right within that menu. Um, and then if we come over here. So these are help you rotate and flip. So this will rotate your um, whatever selected round and this will mirror it either top to bottom or side to side. But what I really like to do is when you have the three I have three here, I have three different, or three copies of the exact same thing. But when I go into, if I hit okay, and I go, so it's gonna move the hoop now, because I changed the positions. When I go in here and list my threads, you'll see there's three pages of threads. So you're going to be changing the thread each one of those times, which is time consuming and I, I know that um, when you're doing just small bits of, like so the yellow is just a little bit, that, that takes up a lot of time when you're switching so much. So when you go back to the home menu and you go into, this is our thread grouping. So this only works if you have all three of the same pattern. You go in here and it's gonna group all the threads together and I'm gonna hit okay. And now it's going to bring us back to this main screen. And if we go to the thread list, now it's just these. So it's going to do this color in all three patterns all at one time, this one and so on. So it's going to cut the amount of time that you spend changing threads down incredibly, like a lot. So it's really great. So if you're repeating the same thing over and over again, that's a great little feature. All right, and then let's say you're like, uh, I like these, but I'd like to stitch them out all in one color and I don't want it to stop for breaks and for me to switch. Then you go into, see this little flower? It's a colorful flower to a white flower. So you use this and now it says it's gonna sew all layers without stopping to change colors. So you can come back in here and you can still, if you're like, oh, I don't like that first circle, um, I wanna start my, um, stitching at the next part, you can start it here, but it's not going to stop again until the very end unless you stop it because it's going to just remove all the thread change breaks. So that's really cool if you're like, I just want to do like a tone on tone or um, a grayscale or whatever you want, whatever color you want. It's just going to remove all the thread changes, which is super handy because I know sometimes I get um, stitch it like I I buy a design and I'm like, I kind of like it just all one color, but they've like broken everything up so you can change it all the time. That one is quick and easy. Okay, so now if I go in here, I'm gonna take away my wreaths. Say goodbye to the wreaths. Okay, we're gonna delete the wreaths. But let's say I had, I wanted a couple different things. So I'm going to go to the home menu into the flower and I really like this spaceship. I wanna jet away to the moon or maybe Mars right now. And then I wanna add in, let's have a T-Rex. Who doesn't love a T-Rex? So we'll have a little T-Rex here. And one more thing, let's add in a flower because 
those things need flowers. Flowers go with everything. Okay, so I have these three things, but let's say I know I wear where all my threads are for the spaceship, but I really need time to think about what I'm going to use for the T-Rex. So I want to make sure that we're going to stitch out the spaceship first, then the flower, then the T-Rex. Then you go over to, it's really easy to remember, it's the one with the numbers on it, three, two, one, or one, two, three. Um, oh my goodness, that takes me back to Family Matters when I was a kid. Okay, so then we click on the order we want it to stitch. So if we want it to stitch the spaceship, then we want the flower, then we want the T-Rex. That's all we, we select those three in that order. We hit this button again, and now we hit OK. And we are able to go in here, and it's back to color. Our monochrome automatically turns back off. And now, if we look, we're gonna stitch green first. So that's gonna take us up here. We're gonna do the spaceship. And then we're gonna stitch the flower next, which leaves us time to do the T-Rex. And then, so you could even decide that that's not the, the order you want to do it in and you can change it up completely. But that is a cool way. I know sometimes I'm like, okay, I have the time to do a bunch of thread changes right now, but then I need like 10 minutes where it could stitch out something else that I know it's going to take longer to stitch out so I can go and make a cup of tea and then come back up. So many options. Okay. Another great little thing. Okay. So we're going to say goodbye to the T-Rex and the spaceship. Goodbye guys. All right. And then I'm going to make this flower just a little bit smaller. Okay. And I want to center it in my, uh, my screen. And so you can move this around and you can sort of get it close to center, but like, it's hard to tell what exactly is center. So if I use this little heart button here, it's going to put it right in the center and it's going to make it perfectly balanced. So you have your centered object, but let's say I want a border around it. I'm going to go into home and I'm going to go into my flower. And if I go back to the flower, we have some border designs, but then we have in this geometric the some of these really cool corner things. So I'm going to use this one and it puts it in the center. But if I'm like, I'm going to put it up in the top corner. I really like how that looks. And then I want to do one in each other corner exactly balanced so it looks perfectly symmetrical. All you have to do is make sure that one is um, that one is selected and you hit this four heart one and it's going to put them all four of them in the corners, which is super cool. But let's say you decided, oh, I don't like them that far away from the flower, so I'm going to delete um, three of them and then I'm going to bring this in I'm going to like okay I like it better that close to the flower so then I go back and I do it again and it's going to put them around so it's super nice and balanced and it looks super pretty um okay and the last little one I'm going to show you which I think I use the most is I'm going to get rid of these borders but I'm going to leave the flower I often have I'm stitching something out in the middle, but I want words around it. But when you put in your normal words, they go straight across so you can have them up and down. But like you want something that's going to be the arc of the flower. So when we go into the home button, we have the ABC. And so I'm going to put in, it's a medium size, large letters. Oh my goodness. I had a brief nightmare about spelling things wrong, but it's okay. Genomi is written on my machine. We have Genomi. Okay. Do you know, do you ever have that when you're looking at something and you look at it too long and then you're like, oh, that doesn't look right, but it's like, right. It's just, it's weird. It plays with my mind. Okay. So then I have, um, this, sorry, this arc one, you go in here and look, you can even increase the spaces between your letters. So they're perfectly balanced. And I like this, I like to spread them out because we're going to make them arc. And then you go up here and you bend them and they will fit around whatever you have perfectly. And so you can't move them. I always try to move them in that menu. And then you can snuggle it up close and it looks so much um, more professional, like that you've customized that. 
or you can go in if you're like oh I want it at the bottom then you arc it the other way once again try to move it when I'm not supposed to all right and then you have it at the bottom of your flower and that's I use this a lot and I used it um, on my little hoop with the love where it's curved along the wreath it's a great option for customizing anyway so that is I'm gonna flip you right around again that are some of the cool features that are on that's on the Memorycraft 550e and a lot of our other embroidery machines have um, similar features uh, the 550e has a couple it has the larger hoop and it also has some wedding designs which is super cool for monogramming and um, giving per personalized wedding gifts and um, there's also the Sashko stitch, which is super cool to stitch out. I actually have a project in mind for that. Um, anyway, so I hope you learned a lot about this today and thanks for joining me. Later this week, we have tomorrow on Janome HQ. So on our sister site, Janome HQ, Michael is going to be using the AccuFlex stitch in the ditch foot. So that's really cool. If you're a quilter and you like to do a lot of stitch in the ditch, um, you will love that one because it's going to help line everything up properly. And then Thursday on Janome Canada back here, we have Erin and she's doing quilting with rulers. So it's sort of like this fun two things for the quilters are going to love. So I hope you come back from that. And I have a couple questions here. Uh, yeah, Sandra, dive into some of your features on the 550E and then let us know um tag us in some photos of what you've done because i want to see what you get up to there's the sky's the limits and uh, like when you buy an embroidery machine there's so many great features and this one is packed with stuff and you can you don't you need to buy anything else right away you can get started and make beautiful designs right then and then we have another question some in the hoop designs have stops for completing a specific function before continuing but the color does not change between these functions Oh, um, that is a really good question. We will get back to you on that. I'm not sure. I haven't tested it out where, um, with the monochrome feature on something with stop so you can do something else, like with applique, right? Um, but that is a really good question. We will test that out and we'll get back to you on um, what we do or if that's a possibility. Um, yeah, good questions here. Anyway. Thank you um, so much for joining today and take care of yourself and um, stay safe, everyone. Bye.